I needed that song after that story. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. We need to smile and love one another, huh? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but anyways, welcome back to Families in Action on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. And Tom, Alice, wow. I, I don't even know what to say. I've heard this story so many times from you guys, and it just breaks my heart every time sure I does. hear it. Even though I know you're doing God's will and you're saving kids, and, you know, it still does. Yeah, I know. You know, it's every time we speak or at any event, it just kind of brings all those feelings I'm back sure. up. And and with... Uh, but yeah. be, before you... Oh, I'm sorry, ahead. Mike, I don't want to cut you off, but everybody says time heals all. I don't buy that at all. What time does, it makes it easier to deal with. Yeah. It, but it doesn't heal it. Yeah, it doesn't. No, it, it doesn't heal anything. It just kind of lessens the pain a It little. lessens the pain and lets you go on. And then yeah. a dear friend of mine, Stephanie, yes. actually, we were talking to her one day when something bad happened to her, too, and she yes. and said, how are you doing? And she says, life's for the living. Yeah. We have to go on living. Yeah. And I, I, I absolutely believe that. Yes. So so there you go. What, Mike, I'm sorry. Wow. Well, no, what I was just going to say is I, I think it's very important to mention because what we talk about here every week and with the, I think you and I both agree, the impending legalization of marijuana here in California, right. it's important to point out that Alice just told us something during the break that I wasn't aware of, and, and you, you, had sus you were suspicious, suspicious of this, yes. but didn't know. But the driver of the car that uh, killed her sons was under the influence of marijuana. Yeah. Well, he, they, they, they tested him for it, but uh, back then they couldn't really pinpoint how far in advance he had smoked it and how much is in his system, and mm -hmm. so they didn't charge him for it. And they still can't with drug tests. Um, there is actually one test, which is a saliva test that can only test for today. Mm -hmm. So that's that's interesting, but they don't have that in hospitals and ERs. That's just in labs when you yeah. want to test. So yeah. it's really hard, and that's what's scary right now about THC and marijuana in schools and all that, because if you test somebody, it's going to be in their system. Right. So you don't really know if it right. was right now or last week. Right. So right. it's an interesting deal. But again, I mean, you guys, I, I say this a lot to a lot of people that comes to our show because we get all the heroes from Santa Clarita, right? Yeah, we sure To do. come on our show and talk. But you guys, yeah, I mean, you're right up there on top of everyone. You guys are the angels of Santa no. Clarita. You really are because when you talk, kids listen. I hope. You know, a I, lot, know. I know a lot of times when we speak that they have every 15 minutes, you know, some will come up to us and say, thank you. Yes. You know, you changed our lives. You, you made a difference. You know, thank you, thank you. But Kids, kids don't say that unless it's true. Yeah. Mm. They really don't. They don't go out of their way to say that unless it's true. Yeah. So when they come up and they give you a hug and they say thank you, they mean it. Yeah. Well, we heard the powerful story, and it is a powerful story. Before you go any further, will you do me a favor? What's that? I hate to do this to you. Will you read that poem again? Oh, boy. <laughs> I, know. I, I know it's hard, and it's emotional. Well, it's a toughie for me because I lost uh, my son as well, only not to the same thing. But I remember. Here we go. Yeah. This is the plaque that's at the, um, the Youth Grove. Our children are our most precious gifts. They are our sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, loved ones, and friends. Vow today that no more will lose their lives because we drive too fast. No more will die because we drive under the influence. No more will perish because we lapse in attention for just one moment. No more will be lost because of reckless acts on the road. Join us in a cry that no more names will be added to this memorial. Wow. You know, every time my kid, my kids get in their car and drive. Now, one lives with me, my 18-year-old, but my other ones are still, they drive. But every time they get in their car and drive away or I know they're going a distance, I get that feeling in my gut. You know? Yeah. It's, I just get it. Yeah. I mean, I know they're going to be safe, but it's still, it frightens me. Yeah. Well, we've talked about the Youth Grove, and, and you've heard Alice and Tom's story about the death of their sons. So... Here's the thing. You want to go down there and visit the Youth Grove, especially if you have teens, if you have uh, young adults in your house. You want to do this. So if you've never been there, by the way, it's in Central Park, and that's located at 27150 Bouquet Canyon Road. But here's something even more nifty and peachy keen, I think we can say, <laughs> and that is you have the Evening of Remembrance and the Walk of Remembrance coming up. 
Yes, absolutely. It's uh, Wednesday, September 7th, and the walk will begin at 6.15, and you meet at the flagpole. And then we have right after The flagpole at the park. At the flagpole at the park, absolutely. It's kind of like the main entrance there. And then the ceremony itself will start at 7.15 p.m. So the walk will um, end right at the ceremony at the top there where the youth grove is. So you can either come for the walk or skip the walk and just come for the ceremony at 7.15. I've been there before. This is an amazing evening. It really is. You need to bring your children. Absolutely. I, mean, Absolutely. I, I dragged all my kids there every year when they were just starting mm-hmm. um, driving and before they drove because they got to hear this stuff. I can lecture them and tell them about safety and all that. But when, like you said, when they sit in a park and those names are read and their kids their age and a hundred and two names are read, you can't say can't happen to me. Right, right. So, we really we got this teachable moments when we're raising children. Mm-hmm. This is a, an extremely large teachable moment. I think yeah. everyone that has a kid that's going to drive soon or is driving or just mm-hmm. started driving, you need to be there. Yeah, yeah. You, you do. I I even bring all my drug my rehabs because mm-hmm. yeah. those yeah. kids need to be there. Well, the school districts actually take groups to the youth grove for that very reason yes. because it's so visually powerful, mm-hmm. and the fact that they can actually learn something about the individuals who are honored there. But now I know you speak, mm-hmm. and and other people speak during the evening of remembrance. But it that's a powerful, powerful evening. It's uh, we uh, we have a, a few people. Um, we have a this year we have a flutist playing a song um and then we have a slideshow of all the pictures mm-hmm. of all the kids and their names are red and um so they actually kind of get to meet them in a way yeah the, their pictures it's not I mean, a it, faceless name you know it's also a night of remembrance for the parents to come see their children's face i mean that's something very important to them to see their their faces and their names um also for the walk the parents are given a white rose to carry and place on the tree stumps and um, and then um, trying to think what else. A couple of songs are, read, are right. played. You know, where, where exactly is it again? <clears throat> at you have the address. Here's the address. It's in Central Park, and it's at two seven one five zero Bouquet Canyon Road. It's not hard to find once you get to the park. Um, you, you'll find the youth group. Well, there'll be deputies. and yes. Yeah, there'll be people. Uh, people there'll, that'll there'll be a lot of you. cars driving into it. Yeah, so yeah. There, There'll, there'll be it. signs and deputies. And you come early you because the, the activities in the park are still going on as far as football and soccer and all right. that. So the fields are kind of busy. They can easily look it up so. on their device. That's the right thing to say in this day and age, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? <laughs> the youth group is at the very back. If you go to the uh, concerts in the park and you'll see that, to the left is the youth grove. It's right. to the very, very back. Kind of at the main place play area it's in the back of yeah. that what do you want to what do you want people to get out of all this I, gu- I guess if you're taking a parent with a child you know just that the idea of the awesomeness of how many names are there yeah. and I mean we have kids there as young as seven yes and, you know I mean I, they, they we have a young girl that was just jogging with a track team and a football player adjusted his ice pack took his eyes off the road and ran into there we have a pedestrian that was crossing with his bike so you know there it can happen for any reason and and let me just say that when this first came about when the youth grove first came about texting was not nearly as hot and 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 social media was not nearly as hot as it is now so now we have added all of those kinds of distractions to driving as well as being under the influence yeah so Mm -hmm. and a lot of people think Ah. that the youth grove is just for drugs or alcohol no. and it's not we have all different reasons yeah. why the kids are there and so that's one of the things yeah i was watching the news the, um, last week and a six-year-old eight and an eight i'm sorry an eight and eleven year old was walking with their mom and some, some young guy ran them over drunk and killed the kids right samantha and i think patricia just dead so, I mean, it's just, it's horrible what's going on there. And we, we really have to bring some kind of awareness to it. And this youth grove is some huge way to bring awareness to our valley Yes. here in Santa Clarita. Well, let's repeat it once again. This is coming up, Evening of Remembrance and the Walk of Remembrance is coming up Wednesday, September the 7th in Central Park. And that's located at 27150 Bouquet Canyon Road. And the walk will be at uh, 615. And then the evening of remembrance will actually start at 7.15, following the walk very shortly. But if you're a parent who has uh, 
teens or young adults that are out there driving or th- gonna, thinking about driving, you absolutely want to take them out there. This and, and is, anybody can go. Anybody. Any, anybody can it's go. not open just to, to people that had lost their children. Anybody right. can anybody go. Can go. That's right. Uh, and show their support. In fact, the more people that show, the more support yeah. Santa Clarita has. I, I have, yeah, I have a phone number if anybody has questions they want to call. It's 661 250 Three seven two seven. Can you repeat that one more time? It's six six one two five zero oh, three seven two seven. Gotcha. Boy, Alice, you did it again. You came here and told your story, and you turned me into a blubbering. I couldn't <laughs> hardly talk. That it's such a powerful story, and it's it's so sad. I'm sorry that happened to you, folks. But you know what? Carrie's right. You've taken this and turned it into something very, very powerful. That your sons would be very proud of. Everyone's very proud of, and, and you are truly heroes, and you truly save lives. Mm-hmm. Truly save lives. I was talking to the people. I, I run the, the psych unit at Henry Mayo, and we're in the staff meeting, I was saying to the people, that, you know, in order to get to this unit, you have to want to die, want to kill somebody, or have no idea really who you are or able to take care of yourselves, think we're saving lives, and the staff just went, wow. But you know when you lose them, you don't know when you save them, and I can guarantee yeah. you, you save lives. Tom? I guarantee it. <laughs> Notice you well, got your name right there. I, yeah. <laughs> Phil. I, I, I wanted to add that we really encourage the, the parents to come out because we know that these kids have been sitting behind their parents, mm-hmm. watching them, learning how to drive for the last 15, 15 and a half years. So parents out there texting, uh, you know, talking on the phone, Running doing all lights. the bad habits. Yeah. That's picked up by that little two- or three-year-old and transitions all the way to the 15. Yep. And quite quite a lot of the, the kids up there were, you know, yeah. doing something that they were taught. That, that they shouldn't be doing. And, right. and by the way, parents, do what I say, not what I do does not work. Right. Yeah. I mean, you could say it all, 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 all the way you, all the times you want to, but your kids are going to do what you do. That's how they learn. Let's go on break. This is Families in Action on your local hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. Be right back. Welcome back to Families in Action on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. I'm Carrie Quashen. Every time you guys come over here, it's emotional. It's just like, oh, my heart gets heavy. I'm sorry. Well, no, it's okay because... <laughs> By getting the message out, we're saving people, and and we're having an event, and I'm going to let Tom, again, give us the information on the event and where and how and what and all that stuff, Tom. So it's the Santa Clarita Valley Youth Grove. (laughs) Evening of Remembrance. The Youth Grove. (laughs) Evening of Remembrance. Right. At Central Park. And the date? That is Wednesday, September 7th. Alice, why should people show? I want. I really want to just drag it, push, drag it on, push it down people's throats. Uh, two reasons: come um, to remember the the kids that are there, to, mm-hmm. to remember them, and so, also and support the and families, suppo- and support the families, and also to spread awareness of reckless driving, uh, the consequences of reckless driving, uh, or, and safe driving. Yeah. Guys, we have a hundred and two young people. Um, at the Youth Grove, in remembrance of those people. 102. That's a lot of our children here in Santa Clarita that lost their lives. We need to be there. We need to show support. We need to use it as a teachable moment so we don't have 103 and 104, and I can go on for days. Absolutely. So, well, we can look at it as 102, but actually, when you break it down, looking at the family structure and whatnot, you can double that with just a mom and a dad. You have the brothers and sisters, and you have the extended family. So, um, you know, this kind of... uh, Yeah. And we stop this at a certain age. What about the other people, you're right, that have lost their lives here? How old, what's the ages at the youth grow? When does it stop? Well, uh, we, we, when we uh, built it, we decided we wanted it to be for the youth of the valley. Right. So the cutoff age is 24. Gotcha. So that's just 102 names from seven years old. 
to uh, I 24. Think, yeah, Wasn't I think, it six? I think actually we have maybe a five-year-old oh, now. Oh, you know yeah. what? It was mm-hmm. young. Yeah, so yeah, young. so from, from infant to 24. Yeah, yeah. And so we lose, we're losing way too many people across the country. And, you know, but, we don't have everybody that's ever been killed in Santa Cruz Valley right. from a traffic-related incident. It's, and it's just any of those who whose names have been submitted by a parent. Right. Yeah, and so. again, there's a lot of others that parents don't want their kids right. there. Right, exactly. They, yeah, they want to yeah. keep it private, and, uh-huh. and we respect that yes. completely. Yes. So it, it's just for people that want their children or their, their child remembered there. Right, absolutely. Well, let's hope that there's a great turnout for that. Thank you so I'm sure much for being I'm with sure us they will. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having us. No, thank you so much for everything you do. And, and I, I could speak for everybody here in Santa Clarita. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you. Yeah. Both of you. <laughs> Now at the beginning, and, and thanks oh. for my chili peppers. <laughs> now the Tom b- brings me chili peppers every every time. I saw time. that. I know. I, I love them. Look at look at. I got them. I'm gonna eat them with my lunch today. <laughs> I was hoping you weren't gonna eat one. <laughs> no, Before not without show. food. <laughs> I know better. At the beginning of the show, we talked about uh, the fact that the the overdose situation is right. is an epidemic, and and it's just blazing through the country. We have we are reported on Cincinnati with seventy eight overdoses in a two week period, and it goes on and on. We've had them here in L A. Listen to this: International Overdose Awareness Day is coming up this Wednesday, yep, August thirty first. Wear a silver ribbon, by the way. That's that's the that's the symbol. Silver ribbon. What we've got to remember this: that we are in the throes of a horrible situation, an epidemic, epidemic worse than the AIDS ed- epidemic. Mm-hmm. If you were listening at the beginning of the show, this eclipses the AIDS epidemic. Worse than car crashes. Worse than auto. We worse have- than gun violence. That's right. <laughs> Imagine this: if every 19 minutes somebody was killed by a gun, what would be going on? Wow. And well, every 19 minutes, somebody's dying from an accidental overdose. That's not including suicides, homicides, robberies, rapes, domestic violence. I can go on for days. Okay. And as you said at the beginning, it may be more than that now. Oh, I'm sure it's, it is. It's no. gotten, probably this goes, gotten worse. I think they're always, what, two or three years behind? Yeah. So it's gotten a whole lot worse in the, in the last couple of years than it's ever been. So, yeah, the numbers are going to be dramatically higher, I have a feeling. Could be. Hey, yeah. Kerry, yes. one of the things we need to mention real quickly before we I go off here is, is the interlock a ignition device. Tell us what you guys device. think about this. Interlock ignition device. Listen, all you have to do is blow into a thing that's basically a breathalyzer, but you can't start your car until you do that. So if somebody is over the limit, they are not going to be able to start their car. That's going to keep drunk driving off the streets so people aren't going to be dying from that anymore. How does that I, sound to you? I think it's you? a great idea. I was driving on the freeway the other night. And there was somebody right in front of us, and we and um, I was with Delise, and she actually picked up the phone and dialed nine one one because this guy was so drunk that it scared us. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was. It's, we we want to stop that. Absolutely. This guy could have killed himself, somebody else. We want to stop this. Well, in from most happening. cases, drunk drivers don't kill themselves; they exactly. kill everybody else exactly. around them. So <laughs> imagine this: the little eight, the little eight and eleven-year-old. Um, last week, they got killed. If they had that thing in that car, and this guy went whoo, and was too drunk to drive, that car would not would, have started. Absolutely. Those kids would be, would alive. be alive. And we want everybody to have those yeah. now. The Justin, right? Justin's right here with us. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. That's our board operator. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. By the way, <laughs> once again. But no, seriously, the state of California is now going to going to do this statewide for people who've been convicted of drunk driving. But we want this in all cars because, listen, it's a no-brainer. If you have these in all cars, you're not going to have drunk drivers on the street. And I, I won't get into all the other particulars, but there are random checks as you drive the car, right? So it doesn't just let you get in the first time. You can't go down the street and go to a bar and drink and be over the limit and then get back in your car and go because you're going to be tested again. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. It takes all of about three seconds. Big deal, right? And we can, right. we can take that number of drunk driving arrests and deaths and just beat it down to almost nothing if people do it this way. Again, thanks for every thanks for everything you guys do. It's time our show is over, yeah. and um, I want to thank our listeners. This is Families in Action on our hometown station, AM twelve twenty KHTS. Till next Monday.